Chuck Reeves has been hailed as one of the master sales trainers, sales gurus. And in fact, I've had the pleasure of interviewing Chuck on sales a multitude of times. And I've also had the pleasure of watching him speak. And he is one of those people that changes people's lives. And so what you're going to get a glimpse of today is a master sales guru, IT guru, decorated war veteran, and I'm happy to call him my friend as well, and mentor, and that is Chuck Reeves. So Chuck, just so lovely to be here with you today. And I love that you've got this magnificent screen behind you. That is awesome that you've created all of that. But I just want to make sure that we see your face as well. So I will oh. do this so that we see your face. There you oh. are. Chuck, I haven't had on a guest before that has created such incredible visuals. So a very warm welcome on this Thursday. Oh, thank you. I knew I would be working with Nadia, so I had to put on my best game, my best face, and the best that I could do. You're a master when it comes to marketing, when it comes to presenting, so you're in a league of your own. And when the two of us come together, I guess we got two leagues that are merging here. This would be the world championship or something. Thank but you. I want to, when you called, when we and I, you and I started talking about this event, I was thinking, well, Nadia is marketing. She knows marketing inside and out. She's a marketing guru. And I know sales. And sales and marketing are two different disciplines. Quite often, we can look at an organization chart and see the vice president of sales and marketing. And does that person really have expertise in both? But the point is, they come together at some point. Marketing has to be in sync with sales. Sales has to be in sync with marketing. So when I look at your personal branding and branding in general, that has to be in sync with what we expect the sales team to produce, what we expect to come away with from customers and revenue and profit and all that. So this has been an exciting challenge for me. So thank you for inviting me in. Whoa, Nadia, I cannot hear you. We, before we went live today, you said that AI is going to be as big as electricity, as the internet. And AI is already very much part of our lives. I'm so hoping that in the time we have together, you unpack it for us and help us understand, instead of being afraid of it, how we can mm. use it to enhance our overall brand, both Yes, uh, the audio is cutting out, but let's let's move forward. That statement that I made about AI being as big as electricity and the internet came from the chairman of J.P. Morgan Chase earlier this week when he was doing his earnings report, and he said, "This is how big it's going to be." When we think about the internet, that's bigger than we're ever going to be able to uh, uh, cover, and the. Um, Electricity is going to be here forever, but if you think about it, AI and the internet depend on electricity. So if someone wanted to take down our country, obviously the best way to do it would be to take down the power grid. But in the meantime, you and I and everyone else needs to learn to use electricity, AI, and the internet to the optimum. In fact, let's look at it for a moment. I mentioned a, min a minute ago that uh, marketing and sales are two different disciplines. They have to come together. They have to come together with uh, AI, with uh, our functions, our strategies, our tactics. So everything that we're doing in our corporate world needs to be in sync with AI and with marketing. So when I look at marketing, what I see is that's where branding really occurs. But the branding has to match up with the opportunities in the marketplace and the face-to-face -face events that are going to happen in sales. So what happens is application happens in sales, branding happens in marketing, and when they come together, there's magic to be had. The more you know about both of these, the more successful you will be. At the corporate level, we understand this. 
But does the individual understand that their personal branding now is critical? This is something that it used to be unique. We could try to set ourselves apart. We see entertainers and some people setting themselves apart, one name performers. And now we have to look at ourselves, whatever uh, profession we are in, whatever role we are in, we want to learn how to brand ourselves. I'll be showing you my brand, of course, but how do we brand ourselves? Not just to say, hey, look at me, but brand ourselves to say, here's what we could do for you. When you have a need, when you have a desire, when you have something that you want to accomplish, my brand can help you do that. And the brand has to speak to that. AI is a tool. This is the key point I want to drive home today. Don't be afraid of AI. Don't be afraid of a screwdriver. Don't be afraid of a hammer. It's a tool. AI does not create. You hear the term generative AI. It's not really generating anything. It's refining. Whatever your competency is, AI is a tool that can make it better. It can make it faster. It can make you more valuable. AI is a tool you must learn to use. Not it would be good if you learn to use it. You must learn to use it. And it's already being used and abused. A phrase that I use is AI or a formula. AI plus GI equals success. Artificial intelligence plus genuine intelligence equals success. In sales, what we say is AI plus GI equals ROI because the whole purpose of sales is to generate some kind of profitable revenue. So AI plus GI equals success. You will not be any better because of AI than you already are with your general, your gener your skills. What you know right now, your genuine skills, that's what's going to take you to the next level. AI can take you there faster. AI can take you there better. So we're into CQI, continuous quality improvement. Okay, so, so excellently articulated. And by the way, in the middle of that, and Chuck, thanks for being so masterful, I completely lost power and AI could not help me with that, but you, <laughs> you carried on. But I wanted to ask you, can you give us examples? Because let's look at organizations that are using AI plus GI, so genuine intelligence plus artificial intelligence together. What examples, what concrete examples can we think about of people, organizations who are doing this well? And then yeah. what yeah. advice, guidance do you give to people who are watching who are not yet fully on the bandwagon? Get hungry, get thirsty. Uh, go after AI with a vengeance. I was doing a seminar for a group of CEOs. And prior to the seminar, the ones that w wanted to wanted some casework they could do ahead of time. And one of the exercises I gave them was, here's a case study, develop three opening questions. And so we got into the seminar and they brought their opening questions. And some of them were really good. Some needed some help. And then we went to AI in the classroom. We went to, we use chat GPT because that's the most common. We went there and the CEO said, I spent three hours developing my three questions. AI just did it in 15 seconds and did a better job of it. Okay, so that would be a good example is, so you are looking at coming up with interesting questions. You type yeah. into your chat, chat GPT. But as you just said, that alone is not enough. Then you've got to tweak it right. and look at it. But allow it to give you a framework is what you're saying. You actually listened to some of my lectures, didn't you? I'm so impressed. You may be the only one that ever did. Yes, that question has to fit into a process. We're going through a sales process. I'm in sales, so we're not going to talk about that. But part of the sales process is here's where the opening question resides. If you don't know the process, you don't know to create an opening question. And if you did, you wouldn't know where to put it. So can we so, break that down for a moment, just because I want to make sure that whoever has just joined us. And by the way, if you have, I'm Nadia Belchick talking to one of the world's most renowned sales specialists, gurus, thought leaders, 
Chuck Reeves, and he's talking about using AI for personal branding, authentic branding, and for sales. Yes. But you are saying if you, as a salesperson, are looking to come up with specific questions, and I'm asking us to be very specific here. So let's say you are selling BMWs, or you're selling Mercedes, or you're selling Porsches. And by the way, it's Porsche, not Porsche, because Ferdinand's last name was Porsche. And you are training your sales team to come up with really good questions. How would you use AI? Excellent. Let's back up one step. One thing that has happened now because of AI, and actually prior to the pandemic, is buyers have become more sophisticated. We used to could surprise buyers. Well, now if you're going to buy a car, you go online ahead of time, you know all the specs, you know all the dealers, you know all the deals, you know how to buy, you know how to sell. So the buyer is more sophisticated. That question that the dealer or the salesperson used to use in a B2C environment probably doesn't work anymore. In the B2B world, business to business, those questions that we used to ask we no longer have an opportunity to ask them. Sometimes the buyer will go out, do their research, and we don't even get a look. So we want to make sure that that initial engagement with the buyer is going to be different. You and I worked together years ago when we were talking about when they had retail salespeople. You go into a retail store now, you have to hunt down a salesperson, but it used to be they were waiting by the door. And we would go in and they would say, may I help you? Well, that's a stupid question. Of course they can help. They know where the merchandise is. And what did we say? We said, no, thanks. Just looking. Is that a true statement? No, because if people are just looking, they're at the zoo, the museum or the aquarium. That's where people go to just look. So they had to come up with newer questions. Now AI will come up with that question for you. You can go to any of the AI engines, whichever one you're using, and go to that AI engine and say, I need 12 opening questions when selling Mercedes to this demographic. Be as specific as you want to. I need six That's different. Fabulous. Op- so you're saying if Porsche is selling their Taycan, which is their electronic vehicle, gorgeous. Go in and ask. I mean, is there something we can't demonstrate it right now, but we're recommending you go into your chat GPT and say, I am a Porsche salesperson. I am looking to sell my Taycan, which is the electronic vehicle. Please give me 12 questions. Yes. In the advanced levels of value added selling, in the opening question, you cannot mention your product service company yourself. Can't talk about your products, can't talk about your services, can't talk about your dealership, and you can't talk about yourself. I've helped a lot of people like you buy one of these wonderful Porsches. Can't do any of that. So when you spot the individual, what can you, with knowledge or with intuition, assume about that individual? And you can look at their demographics. What is their age? What is their uh, family situation? If they're coming in with a family, how are they dressed? So you can go to chat GPT or any AI engine and say, when a buyer presents themselves at my Porsche dealership and they are dressed like this, or they appear to have this demographic, what are six questions I could use to open the conversation without mentioning product, service, company, or self? Talk about them. That's amazing, Chuck. I've never thought of doing that. So and then this is where your GI comes in, your genuine, genuine intelligence, yes. your ability to finesse it. You're not just going to read from a piece of paper. Exactly. Now, AI will help you develop some great scripts for people who have to have scripts. You have a call center or something like that. Right. But instead of having a read question one. And if they give response A, B, or C, I go to that response and then I read that. Then I go to this one. It'll give you multiples. It will also train your salespeople. It will give you all the direction that you need. What what is the best practice for asking an opening question in a premier automobile dealership? Okay, we have got lots of practicing to do. So let's say we're working with people, and I'll go back to Porsche, who are interacting with dealers around finance. These are the finance professionals, and they work out credit. Yes. And they want to develop a really good relationship with the dealer. 
So one of the things I speak a great deal about is connection, building trust, building rapport, getting to know the person. But then you're saying there are other questions they could ask. That's one of the AI search engines could help you with. What do you think they'd come up with? I am constantly amazed at what AI comes up with. Uh, for the financial person, when the family or the individual is sitting down at the table, we're going to look at how we're going to finance this automobile. But they're dealing B2B. So remember, they're Porsche finance people, and they are dealing with the dealer or the dealer's finance. Oh, they're dealing with the dealer. Oh, okay. What are the top three goals for your dealership this year? What are five obstacles you've identified that might prevent you from making those goals? And this is something that every successful sales professional knows. Sales people do not know this, but sales professionals know this. You ask a question, regardless of the answer, the next three words that come out of your mouth are, and what else? And what else? And it's called getting truth on the installment plan. Here's where AI helps. I've been doing that for years. So what are the top three goals you said? One, two, and three. And what else? Well, this and this. And what else? And we've learned over time that we don't get the top goal in the first five. We get it later. In an interpersonal relationship, we don't get the top issue in the first 10, for Pete's sake. So we can go through and what else? If we have gone to AI, and I'm the Porsche person, and I've asked the question, what are the top 10 issues, dealerships in this demographic or in this zip code or in this area are facing right now? AI will tell me what those issues are. Then I can, when I'm talking to the finance person at Porsche or wherever, if they don't mention one of those, then I can ask, well, what about X? Then they know I know their business they know I'm interested in helping them go to the next level. So if you know you're supposed to be asking questions and uncovering the customer's need or uncovering the customer's desire, why don't you know what some of them are before you even get there? And don't go going in saying, I know exactly why you want to buy today. Instead, go in and start asking questions. And if they don't mention that, you have that in your pocket. You know, you can pull that out and say, well, what about this? AI is amazing. Whoops, I lost you again somehow. Thank you. <laughs> Where's the AI for this? Chuck, by the way, do you know what I'm waiting for? Whoever comes up with this is the AI. You know you're when you're on a big virtual platform and you've got lots of people on. And the only way to make people feel like you're looking at them is to look into the camera. Right now, yeah. I'm looking into the camera. But right now I'm looking at you and then I'm looking down to add my comments. Who can come up with something when I'm looking at you? It still makes the other audience members feel that you're looking at them because it's so counterintuitive to look into a camera all the time, isn't it? Someone's going to come up with that if they haven't already. You know, you bring up an interesting point. The studies that have been done about nonverbal communication and 94% of selling happens at the subconscious subliminal level. They've also found that most of our communication happens through the five senses that are represented in the face. So if you think about all five senses, they're all right here. I haven't figured out how to use smell and taste in my sales presentations yet, but I'm working on it. When we have these uh, conversations like this, even though it's virtual, you're getting a lot of information off of the person's face. And I'm like you, when I'm speaking to an audience, I want to lock eyes and find out where everybody is and what's working. If I'm saying something that's confusing them, I want to know that. There is a camera that sinks down into the middle of your screen and you can look through the camera and see the person you're interviewing. But we want something that will artificially put our face in front of everybody that's on the call. Yeah, It goes in the middle of the screen, but does it go when I'm looking at you now to make everybody feel like I'm looking at them? But no. that's you know, interesting. No. So we're discussing using AI, and it's interesting that you have been such an adapter and an adopter of AI, because I would have thought that you went, there are certain things about sales that are so foundational, interest in the other person, and what else? And yet you 
are saying that AI can even take your salespeople to the next level. So organizations yeah. who have big teams of salespeople and who are focusing on the interpersonal connection, you're saying the interpersonal connection, but using AI to fuel that and to give depth to your questions is what you're saying. You just hit the nail on the head. It's not only uh, better connections with people, it's more connections with people because AI increases productivity. How could I engage more people more successfully in the same time frame or in the same week or month? And that's where AI is becoming very helpful for us. Give us an example. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm talking about where people are using this in that way. Like when I think of AI, I think of Delta, calling Delta, getting somebody to answer my question, having a chat with them, having 15 prompts when I call the pharmacy. You know, that's what I think of. And oh, yes, yeah. ChatGPT and the other one that does great graphics and images. That's what I think of. Yeah, Dolly. And oh, yes, so many. A month ago, I was saying there are over a thousand successful platforms. Now I'm told it's 1,700. So there's a lot of them. So what and are some are going to go away. Do what, what? what do you use personally? I mean, to create the beautiful graphics you've done behind you, which I will make sure everybody can see. Oh, good. Well, there are the graphics. Well, we have more later. Uh, I use some very sophisticated software. In fact, if you look on your computer, you may find it. It's called PowerPoint. And it will do marvelous things. You know why? AI is built into PowerPoint and Word and Outlook. It's being built into all of the engines that we use on a regular basis. In fact, one of the points I make is the more you know about AI and GI, the more successful you're going to be. We have to know both. We have to know both. Now, I'm on the sales side of the house. And what you're talking about calling Delta, that's a customer service portion of sales. Customer service should be a robust part of the sales department. I've seen customer service report to the finance department. That makes no sense at all. Because with AI, when you call Delta or any customer service desk, any call center, those people have a different relationship with the customer. Do they know that? A customer will take the word of a customer service person over the word of a salesperson. We assume the salesperson has to meet a commission or they're going to get a check or they're trying to meet their quota. But we don't think the customer service person has any of that. So if I go to you and say, Nadia, you need to upgrade to 2.0. Nadia, you need to upgrade to 2.0. And you're thinking, well, Chuck just wants to make another check. But then you call my business and the customer service person says, you know, Microsoft made a change to Outlook and our 2.0 will eliminate all these problems that you're having. Now you're going to buy it because you assume they don't have a uh, dog in that fight. Well, AI can give you all the information. You can use PowerPoint, Word, Outlook, Excel, any of those to formulate that or form that so that any employee on the team can use it. I'm actually using Excel now, and I'm a sales guy. Us sales guys don't do numbers. If a salesperson created an expense report, how many boxes would it have? Two, name, total. This is all you need to know. I spent some money. But instead, I can now use AI inside of Excel to build cost justification tools. So I don't have to know all the formulas. I don't have to know all the details behind it. I can say I want to show how improving productivity in this particular area where they're doing this many units, this many dollars, this many sales is going to how it's going to impact it when I take it up 1% and it'll tell me. Chuck, what are the essential, like if we were talking about AI for dummies, what are you suggesting right now, everybody who wants to be competitive, and we're talking about whether you're a sales manager, whether you're a lawyer, whether you are a physician, what are some essential AI tools that you would recommend? What's your starter kit? <laughs> okay, keep in mind, uh, I'm not a real guru when it comes to all this because there aren't any. AI is not really new, but the recent acceleration of AI, and I'll show you in a minute, I have a graphic, it's not new, but the acceleration is becoming confusing. 
the internet has been around for a long time. I was using the internet when I was at AT AT&T back in the 70s. Can we just pause there? That Chuck was... Out of 1,100 salespeople at AT AT&T at the time, the number one salesperson. I have to add that in. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. And that was all because I didn't know. I I knew that I didn't know. I didn't know a lot of information. And so I would go to other people and say, how do we do this? And I would go to others and say, how do I do that? AI is that person I can go to now. When I worked for AT&T, they had a million employees, a million employees. If I wanted to do a sophisticated cost justification, I could walk down the hall and sit down with a Wharton MBA and he would do the cost justification for me. Well, now I don't have that. I'm a solo Soho, one employee working out of my home. But now I can go to AI and say, I need to do this. How do I do it? And it actually starts answering my questions as soon as I hit the enter button. That's what's so phenomenal about this. So I am getting a couple of questions in. One is how do you know that AI is accurate? And that's actually an interesting question, Chuck, because I have had some inaccuracies. For example, I was talking about, you know, Harvey Coleman came up with the concept of PI, performance Mm image exposure. And when I typed it into chat GPT, it came out with another person, but it was Harvey Coleman. So how do you mitigate those inaccuracies? Here's a cardinal rule for AI, any any AI usage, never copy and paste. Never copy and paste. Check it out. If I need three opening questions, I will ask for seven. If I need two of something, I'll ask for at least four. Then trust but verify. AI is getting better and it will improve. But AI is subject to the mentality and the intent of the developers. We need it's still humans behind all of this. So I don't trust anything that comes out of AI. The way I use it most often is in rewording. I've written 12 books, published seven. So I think I'm something. And have like a new author. one on the A, which is AI and sales. That, that's right. Working on one now. And a couple. Anyway, so I will go to AI and say, would you reword this for me? Because it just, I know what I'm trying to say, it just doesn't flow. And it'll show me something. Will you do it again? It'll show me again. Will you do do it again? He is is part of your starter kit. For anyone who's joining us right now who is mystified by AI and goes, how can it help me? Please rewatch this and I will post it. So number one is chat GPT. Number two would be just give us, you know, we're all at such a different level here. But for those beginners, Play with it. Okay. For beginners, think about when you got your first computer. How did you learn to use your first computer? You used your first computer. You caused it to crash. You caused it to lock up. You caused it to do a lot of stupid stuff. And you eventually figured it out. It's going to be trial and error. We want to be very careful, though, with intelligence, artificial intelligence. When we put something out there, we're reflecting our own intelligence. People don't know that we got it artificially. So you want to double check that. When my CEO clients who have offices at home say, uh, well, who do you get to work on your computers when they lock up? I say, you have two choices. You can call Geek Squad or someone like that, or you can call the eight-year-old kid next door. Either one of them will fix it for you. Find the people in your circle of friends, in your environment who are familiar with AI and talk to them. Do you have a mastermind group for AI yet? You may never, or you may need one right now. Yes. That is, oh my gosh. So I'm sure there's an AI for dummies out there, have no doubt. So right now you're using ChatGPT. What else are you using, Chuck? I'm using Dolly for some graphic. I'll show you a graphic here in a minute. In fact, yeah. the gra- this graphic came out of AI. Okay, let's go. Robot shaking hands with a real hand, AI plus GI. And I'm also using uh, BARD to help with the wording. And I use the capabilities, the inherent capabilities built into everything Microsoft does, Chrome, Word, Excel, uh, PowerPoint. I would highly recommend that you find one or two engines. You can spend your entire life examining all the AI capabilities that are out there. So Bard, did you say Bard? B-A-R-D, yeah, Bard. So Mm -hmm. Bard, 
uh, Dolly and Chat GPT is for yeah. the, because they're people. I mean, and I love what you said earlier. And I know there was something else you wanted to show us. You said that AI might have been around for a long time, but it's the acceleration. And like everything else, demystify it for yourself because otherwise one yeah. feels overwhelmed. And then that's when the competitors are using something that you aren't. That's key. You don't have to use AI. You don't have to use value added selling. You can sell on price. Heaven help you if your competition is doing the opposite. Yes. They're going to sell more. They're going to sell for more. They're going to sell faster. So you have to make a choice right now. Have you checked your social media this week? I'm talking to everybody on the call. Have yes. you checked your social media this week? Well, of course you have. You opened your Netscape browser and went to your MySpace account to see what was going on, right? Those were the, those <laughs> no, were the no, no. They were the kings. And now where are they? Exactly. So when we look at all these AI engines, some will be absorbed into others. We're going to see Microsoft, as usual, buy up a lot of good technology. We're going to see a lot of innovators, but we're going to see some people go away simply because they could not or would not keep up. Well, you know, it's famously adapt or, or die, adapt and innovate and thrive, or you are, you know, totally irrelevant. We've seen it in so many things. We saw it in Blockbuster. We yeah. saw it in Kodak. We continue to see it. So the question is, are you doing this smartly and are you understanding it? Isn't but it interesting that... Make, Go ahead. No, the point you make, and I think is the AI plus GI, which mm -hmm. is the artificial intelligence plus the genuine intelligence, meaning I am not just copy and pasting. So I'm going, not going to remove myself so you can show us the next thing. Here's the key. You ask about um, the fundamentals of AI, which is all we can talk about right now because AI is just basically fundamental right now. AI can make you better. So whatever you're doing right now, AI can help you do it better. It can help you do it faster and it can make you more valuable. You is an interesting word. It can be singular. It can be plural. You as an individual, you as whatever profession you're in, you as an organization, whatever that you is, it can make you more valuable because of its capabilities. Now, here's what I've done in branding right now, AI for sales. So what I did, I've got AI inside the word sales. You can't miss it. There's AI for sales. And we're at 2.0 right now. There was an other uh, earlier branding that we had to abandon. That is and, so smart, Chuck. And then the AI plus GI equals ROI, I picked a Swiss army knife. How many functions does this army knife have? Mm -hmm. And the answer is we don't know. Right. We're always finding more things that it could do. You can't carry one in your pocket on an airplane. They'll take it away from you. But when I travel, I like to have a miniature version because I'm constantly finding things that need to be repaired in my rental car or in my hotel room. And if I've got just a screwdriver, just a little something, I can take care of that and not have to worry about finding an engineer or repair person. So it's going to make you better. We don't know all of the different things these different tools, these different applications can do. That's AI. We're just now figuring it out. Well, here's a graphic that I think points it out. Question for everyone. When did you first use AI? When did you first begin using AI? And many people will say, well, fourth quarter of 2022, when ChatGPT launched and all that became very popular. That's an answer. Maybe you were a later adapter. And sometime during 2023, you began using AI. Have you ever used a, a tool called spell check? That's <laughs> AI. Okay. Why don't we go back to the 1970 era and use spell check? Here's an embarrassing tool that you've probably used. Autocomplete. Every time you do that with your when you're sending a message, have you embarrassed yourself with something that it completed for you and you didn't go back and check it? Always go back and check AI. Oh, my goodness, yes. Chat GPT for me, was the embryo. It's just the beginning. And where we are right now, we're looking at this question that you continue to ask. People are continuing to ask, what are the multiple platforms I need to be looking at? The answer to that question is different for everyone on the planet. 
you find the platform, you find the tools, you find the resources that will help you go where you want to go. Then if you move backwards from that, you can figure out how to brand yourself. You can figure out what your brand must be saying or could be saying. But it's going to be different for everyone. And maybe some of the resources that we're using today will think are in the future just too simple. I don't do that anymore. Or you may find that some of the resources that you selected are growing with you. That's the one you want. Do they have deep pockets behind them and good minds behind them? And they continue to grow. So when you're picking your engines, well, pick one. And as far as the future goes, we don't have a clue. We have no idea what's coming next with AI. And by the way, the AI resource that I use every single morning, it's the largest AI database in the world, I'm told, was generated, was built in the 1970s. And the creator talks into the computer. The computer runs 1,000 reports a day internationally and then talks back to its creator. So it, it was voice to text and text to voice in the 70s for Pete's sake. And what was that? It's called Armstrong Economics. Go to armstrongeconomics.com. Martin Armstrong, eccentric genius. Well connected, knows pretty much every government inside and out. He's pre he predicts everything. Well, he doesn't predict anything. His computer does. So if you want to check out the ultimate, for me, the ultimate AI engine, go to Armstrong Economics and there's a free site. It'll give you uh, two, three, four uh, posts a day. There'll be some interviews. And if you listen to his interviews, you'll hear him stop every once in a while and then start again. Well, what has happened is he has some incredible critical information he doesn't share. But anyway, fascinating guy. So this is where we are right now. The future is going to come out. I have three topics I can talk about, but I want to keep answering your questions and responding to what the folks are asking. Chuck, this has been so much remarkable information. Let's agree that we'll do AI, artificial intelligence, and GI, genuine intelligence, part two, once I get more of the questions in, because there is so much to unpack here. I have made sure that people can reach you at chuck at chuckreese.com if they're looking Good. to help their teams understand how to use ai but this has been just a wonderful lesson and as we continue our conversation we'll get more and more sophisticated but i think you've really helped us unpack today how we can all be using it and just the idea of starting an ai mastermind of really going back to what i always talk about which is in this VUCA, volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous world, are you a proactive influencer or are you a reactive responder? And reactive responder means all of this is going on around us, it's swirling around and we're just reacting. Or are we going to look at these external factors and say, how do we control yes. what we can control? And the fact is that there's certain things we need to learn about AI in order to be competitive. And you've unpacked that so well today. So well, my pleasure and delight to speak to Chuck at Chuck Reeves. Last thoughts for today, Chuck. Last thought for today? Is that what you said? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> okay. You have two choices. You can keep up or you can catch up. People who are late embracing the internet are playing catch up. They're having to find a way to get back into the game. But those who were keeping up, and you're not gonna stay ahead very well because so much stuff is happening, those are the future winners. If you like far side cartoons, then you're my kind of person. I have one in my office where the teacher is standing in the front of the room and all the students are there, but one of them has a head about the size of an orange and he's raising his hand saying, may I be excused? My brain is full. What well, your brain needs to be full. If you picked up two, three, five ideas out of this conversation, start exploring those. Those are the ones that your subconscious mind is saying, you know, there might be something here. If you want to be faster, if you want to be better, if you want to be more complete, Start investigating AI now. Use your search engine. Google, of course, is the big one. But then go to AI itself. Just start with ChatGPT if you're unfamiliar. It's a user-friendly. Uh, 4.0 is a great version. And just put your question in there. And if it doesn't understand the question, it'll tell you. 
And if it gives you an answer and you don't like it, ask it again. And if it, you don't like it, it'll say, well, what do I need to know about this question you're asking that I'm not picking up on? This is the learning curve. We're coming out of the embryonic stage. We're just learning to walk. So let's learn to walk on two feet, walk in a straight line, and keep our eyes on where we're going. Chuck, thank you so much. I am reminding everyone who's joining us right now or watching the recording later is that hiring Chuck Reeves is very expensive. So the fact that you have given us 41 minutes of one minutes of your time, I cannot thank you enough because I am immediately going to do some serious homework and get together with fellow coaches and speakers about having a chat, well, more importantly, an AI mastermind because like anything else, we have to keep learning and how do you keep learning through meeting people like Chuck Reeves? So Chuck, it's you been- You realize you just level. gave the most important advice on this call. When you said, I'm going to go do my homework, people are watching this video because of who they think you are, your branding. And when you say, I need to learn more, what's the only thing they can assume? Oh, Chuck, I mean, the thing is, even being able to, if you think about what we've just done, you were already technologically way advanced when I met you because it was interesting. I was in Vegas this past week speaking at the at ICTF Big Conference. And the last time I was in Vegas was when I got to hear you speak masterfully on sales. And that was pre-COVID and pre-shutdown. So the fact that you and I can now be live streaming with me as the producer, even though I did put up one wrong banner in the beginning, <laughs> I used it from my podcast. I do a, a weekly podcast with my brother called Live Long, Live Strong, Live Healthy. He's oh, a yeah. cancer doctor. So on Saturday, I endorse that, by the way. Everybody needs to watch that. Well, funnily enough, on, on Saturday, we'll be talking about OJ Simpson and yeah, that. what to look out for and ask your doctor, so various other things. But the fact that we can stream live, this required, maybe not such a learning curve for you, but certainly for me, I had to learn it. But like you know, the first barrier to learn anything new, and that's why you have been so masterfully helpful today, is overcoming the fear. Overcoming, whether it's conscious fear or unconscious fear, saying what you've unpacked for us is that it's not that daunting. And how do you eat an elephant, you know, bite by bite, but just going, what can I do in my small world and then expanding it so one doesn't feel so overwhelmed? Wow. This is fun. Sure right. beats working for a living, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. Well, all I can say is Chuck at ChuckReeves.com. Chuck, it is, I always learn so much from you. So I hope everybody who watched, listened, learned as much. And we will end with your thoughts of keep up or catch up. And I'm going to let Chuck end with his saying, which I love. At the end of all your emails, you say something, and that is so profound. And what do you say? I autograph every book, end every email, every letter with two words, teach others. Whatever you've learned about life and success, teach somebody else. That's your role on this planet. Chuck Reeves, always.